what is up with bringing Sim de Jong as a substitution? I don't know. To be what is up with bringing Sim de Jong? I love Sim de Jong. I was in the stadium when, uh, when we got the third star, the 30th uh, championship. He will always have a positive, uh, uh, um, uh, yeah, like, like memory for me, but it was in the past. At this moment, he is not good enough for, to play in Ajax. Welcome to We Talk Ajax. I'm Juan. Thank you for watching again. Today we're discussing the game Ajax against Groningen together with Ajax. Ajax, before we start talking about the game, how much love do we have for the Argentinian players? Tremendous, man. Can we toast on that one? Of course we can. Just, just one, one toast? One toast. Cheers, guys. Ooh, this is strong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the game. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Uno? Yeah. Um, scrappy win or comfortable win? Uh, scrappy win. Okay. In the end. Give, uh, give us a little bit of your, uh, yeah, your view on the game, how it went. Yeah, it's typical um, counter punch uh, team, Groningen. Um, they came in with a philosophy to hurt Ajax. It was uh, it was a good philosophy. Long ball on a strong striker, mm -hmm. and hope they get some chances, which they actually got a few. Yeah. And uh, they, were, they were specifically using a target. Uh, yes, target, target man. Yeah. <laughs> and um, this this is actually a good philosophy, especially when playing away from home in the arena. Uh, it's good. And um, I just got a lot of possession, a lot of chances. Uh, it was actually perfect uh, in, in, in terms of um, uh, yeah, pressing the opponent back to their own goal. Mm -hmm. But the problem is you all, always have parked the bus teams against you, especially in the arena, especially when you're a low flying team. And uh, this was uh, typically the case again today. And it's very difficult to break through uh, against a team that's Defending very compact. Yeah, the difference, in my opinion, between Groningen and other teams that come yeah. to the arena, Groningen has a, has a better um, uh, quality players yes. compared to like uh, with all due respect for Tuna Sittard or these kind of uh, teams. Um, they really sit back and they don't have the ability to really counter punch. Groningen was actually very threatening at times. I think, but please um, tell me if I'm wrong with this. Um, I thought Ajax was playing well until the final third, and then. Uh, they were not sharp in front of the goal. The final pass was not always very, very uh, precise. And the longer the game takes, the more you think, oh, will it go well? Maybe we'll get a counterattack. And actually that happened in the second half. They got a really good chance. And Onana was there to save it. Uh, but these are, you, you have these typical kind of games like Groningen. Um, but one very important thing we have to discuss is the goal that was made by uh, of course martinez happened after something happened also on the field mm. which causes a lot of debate mm -hmm. and that's the second yellow card for the groningen player for mm -hmm. taking too much time mm -hmm. for the throwing how do you view this i i think that's that's a little bit further in in in, in the analysis because actually i will, I will get back to that mm -hmm. if it's okay but yeah sure but um in my opinion one of the things that uh why we have a hard time breaking through yeah. at these sort of games uh, you know the philosophy we're playing with, right? We're playing with with a Champions League uh, uh, variant, or a, how do you say it? Champions yeah, variation. League, variation, yeah, yes. Yeah, selection. Um, uh, with Tadic as a striker position. You know what the strong points are from Tadic. You know he can um, put players in certain positions that they can score. Uh, he's a very good uh, player to uh, make a combination with and, and, and also has a decent uh, finishing towards the goal. Mm -hmm. But it isn't a target man in, in, in within the 16 uh, He's not box. a typical number nine. And the problem with these kind of teams are um, they have a lot of people within a, a, a little Sitting narrow, on on narrow space, like yeah. park the bus, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And you have to be very technical to um, yeah, play through this. Usually Ajax does. You know, usually they score maybe in the 30th minute, maybe uh, very early on in the fifth mm -hmm. minute. Mm -hmm. But if it stays out and you cannot score, then you get a problem. And why is this? Because the only uh, negative thing for me about this uh, formation with Tadic is, is a striker position is 
you do not have a target man to 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 give a long ball for a header or something you know like assist from the flanks uh yeah but that's not typical our way of playing i know but you have to switch when you're not so making actually goals. what you're saying is one of the actually one of the criticism that has mm -hmm. been given to ajax over mm -hmm. the years mm -hmm. even before ten Hag mm -hmm. was a coach mm -hmm. that we don't have a plan b we always play one yes. similar style yes and that's it and it's no problem. I'm not saying Huntelaar is the uh, is the perfect uh, solution for this. We only have like two typical strikers now. It's it's, it's Stadic or Huntelaar. Mm -hmm. Mark is gone. Mm -hmm. And in this kind of situation, we're having a hard time because uh, we cannot counter. Uh, we cannot uh, combine enough to score the goal. We have a lot of chances, but actually today you see with Martinez, it's a shot from outside of the 16-yard box, mm -hmm. which gives us some room. And then they have to attack because they want to uh, get a draw or something. Mm -hmm. And then some more room comes. And then you can score more goals. But if it stays out too late in the game, it is very difficult because the opponent smells the opportunity. Hey, we can get some points today. So what, and they what, go, go what back do, more. What do you suggest in these kind of games? Do, would you start I don't know. that? Or I don't is know. that what you're saying? I don't know. I, I, I actually don't know. I don't have a, a solution for it. But you have to figure out for yourself if you want to play with Tadish all the time in this uh, variation, every game, because Groningen is not like a Real Madrid or a Juventus. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's with all due respect to Groningen, it's not of that uh, not that caliber. That level. Yeah, yeah, yes, of course, okay. that caliber. And um, you think for these kind of games we can use Huntelaar because he always no, misses the goal and he always has need I one think, or two I moments. think in these sort of situations, mm -hmm. and not everybody will agree with me about this because they do not like Huntelaar, but in these kind of situations you do have to have a solution, a plan B. Okay. And Huntelaar is a, a player who plays deep in the box, a fox in the box, mm -hmm. as I, I call it, mm -hmm. and tries to score and is a more of a presence there. Okay. While Tadic... Uh, falls back a little bit more until outside of the 16 and combines, which is also very good. But sometimes you need an other sort of approach. Yeah, let's let's yeah. Uh, let's, so let's uh, go back to the. Yeah, I just wanted to yeah. add something on yeah. that one. Uh, usually uh, today we had a different uh, setup mm. in, the, in the sense that Donny van der Beek uh, was playing, but not as a number 10. No. And but he was put a little bit back together mm. with Martinez. Yeah. So Promes is now playing the 10, which yeah. is also a little bit different than last year, yeah. you know? And when Tadic was playing, Doni was always going yeah. to the box and Tadic will go to the left or to yeah. the right. Yeah. That's, now, uh, that's now a little bit different because Promes is doing the same, but he has to get used to it. It's a different kind of play. Do you agree on this? Yeah, I agree. Okay, so please take us to the, to the red card moment. Yeah, uh, actually, I don't, I don't really know if, if the guy got warned. Before. Like like before or uh, two or three times because the the referee was like one two three you are here you know mm -hmm. like in baseball mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, the problem is um, there there is this thing that when you are um, are taking it slow like winning some time you know uh, that, that stalling stalling yeah um, you can get a, a yellow card for this yeah but actually this guy got already a yellow card this isn't a, a, a free card that you can stall all the game you know but it's a little bit harsh to give him his second so i have to be a little bit uh cautious about what i say about this because i do not know if he like told him already before for stop it mm -hmm. you'll get your second yellow yeah because how <laughs> it how it yeah, bless you mm -hmm. how it um uh seems for me is that maybe he gave him a yellow card and he forgot that he already gave him his first yellow card yeah so it's a little bit harsh for me to give somebody uh, his second yellow card for for stalling, mm -hmm. but if you like comply the rules, it, it's possible. Uh, do you so? Do you agree? Do you agree if uh, if the coach and the players of Groningen complain about this? Would you understand them complaining yeah, about course. this? Of course, uh, because it was nil nil until that time. Yeah, but and then two minutes after the red card, yeah. I scores. Yeah, but that's think I think it's coincidence because let's be honest. Groningen, they had a decent tactic, they almost pulled uh, it off, they had some chances, mm -hmm. but Ajax had 70% possession. And they Ajax had 30, 30, 30, 30 attempts, why, why, yeah. why Groningen had maybe 2 to 4 attempts. Yeah. So yeah, we, uh, yeah to, to go back to our uh, special uh, uh, name for it, sauerkraut, you know, the people who always complain about something, yeah, the glass is half full, the glass is half empty, they did not deserve points, you know? Okay. If you, if you look at the whole match, 
Ajax was the dominant uh, uh, side. Ajax so played. It was not stolen in your It was not stolen. They had a hard time. And that is a compliment you have to give to FC Groningen. Of course. You know, mm-hmm. they had a plan. They, they, they stick to it. Unfortunately, they did not make it until the end. Okay. So conclusion, in your opinion, we, we've earned the win, but it was a scrappy win. Yeah, it, it, it was not um, as, as a confidence win as, as uh, we had in the past. Mm-hmm. We had the same problem against Fortuna Sittard. But at the second half, we scored four or five goals and you do not hear anybody about it. Yeah. Today, it was le- getting a little bit close. You know, I was like, OK, uh, we're almost at the 75th minute. Let's score now. OK, so yeah, um, not uh, very, uh, very good, but it was enough. OK, thank you. Uh, just one more thing, the rating. Yeah. yeah. Um, before I ask you about the rating, yeah. I just want to make one thing clear to our viewers. Uh, we've been uh, receiving some uh, comments about the rating, which we really appreciate. Uh, just to make, just to make one thing clear, the ratings are not from the channel or from We Talk. It's from our panel members, so they are completely uh, on their own when they make the rating, and we just let you know what the rating is that they give the players. So please don't think that We Talk Ajax is the ones that giving that is giving the rating to everyone. So that's clear. Yeah, then. Please do comment if you are not uh, have the same opinion as yeah, I. Yeah, of course. Every yes, time I would, I would love a debate about it. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> please leave a comment about the rating or about yeah. the, the game, whatever you want. We'll, we'll be happy to hear from you. Um, so, who were the standouts uh, for you today? Yeah, it was and who were the ones that didn't really pull it off? Okay, um, let me let me be clear about this. Two two players got an eight for me. Okay. First one was Blind. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second one was Martinez. And I will tell you why. Blind, if I, I, we, we uh, saw the, the game together, his first half it was amazing. It was. The, the passes he gave, he was like going through s- several lines with passing, you know? A lot of players choose to pass to the, first, to the, uh, the, to the first player. First Next player, player, or maybe yeah. one at the back, or maybe one line, <coughs> you know, mm-hmm. one line crossing it mm-hmm. in front of him. Yes. This guy, the whole match, Especially in the first half, he gave like passes on the ground, like two lines further. Yeah, and they and defen- all they all uh, arrived. And defensively, um, there was there were a few moments that he saved us. Uh, he, he was good in the back. There was one typical moment when there was a counter that uh, this this Charleston Benschop, I think, he yep. was running in front of him, and uh, he could not have the pace to keep up with him. But we know this is one of the um, uh, the things Blint uh, is, is is a little bit less at, you know. Yeah, we know that. We so uh, he's very good at the at the ball, on the ball, gives very good passes, but he lacks a little bit of speed. So when he gets in a position that he has to sprint one on one against a fast striker, yeah, unfortunately he just not has the pace. But he has to be sharp not to get in that position. Yeah, and uh, Martinez. Uh, let's be honest, this guy, since this Argentinian uh, star, is, is just a little guy, but he's like a big guy in the field, you know, personality-wise. Since this guy got in the field, in the start, starting 11, he's making such a good impression. He has been in every game, and yes. I'm, not, I'm not joking now, yeah. every game he has yeah. been one of the standout yeah. Uh, yeah. performers. And actually also when he was in the defense. He was playing decent, you know, True. everybody was saying at the TV stations, you know, uh, like his media, like he's, he's so short and he's not tall enough to, but he wins almost every header. He's small, but he leaps like Tagliafico, you know, like a second rocket man. True. And um, uh, the thing about him is he's decent at the midfield. He's, he he um, establishes stability. Like we talked about like several games ago, the problem was we hadn't didn't have a stable uh, midfield. Mm-hmm. This guy, he delivers this. And now with Donny as a six, maybe eight, box-to-box player, what we talked about, you have a typical six and you have Donny who's like a little bit in front of the six, like an eight who goes to the box mm-hmm. front and back. Yeah. I think it's a good balance. The only thing is you have to think about maybe putting Sierra on 10, keeping Promes on 10. We, this, these are luxury problems. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, one thing I have to uh, mention, these were my top performance. Mm-hmm. Masri, again, terrible. Now, let me be a little bit the devil's advocate and yes. be short about yeah. this. Um, Masri just came from an injury. Yes. So you have to give him also the, the, the benefit of the doubt yes. that today it was only to get some rhythm. I know. And I gave him the benefit of the doubt because I gave him a four, but I think it was worse, actually. That's why I also gave Ten Hag a five. A and five. why? Okay, okay. 
he puts in Masrawi just when he returns from an injury. Mm -hmm. Okay, when a guy needs some match fitness, what do you do as a coach? Do you bring him as a starter or do you bring him like the last 30, 40 minutes to, to give him some fitness again? Uh, the latter. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Des was playing perfectly well. Mm -hmm. Why do you make, before a big match against Valencia, again substitution in your defense? Why? That's one. What is up with bringing Sim de Jong as a substitution? I don't know. To be what is up with bringing Sim de Jong? I love Sim de Jong. I was in the stadium when, uh, when we got the third star, the 30th uh, championship. He will always have a positive, uh, uh, um, uh, yeah, like, like memory for me, but it was in the past. At this moment, he is not good enough for, to play in Ajax. I just have to be honest about this. I love the guy, he's not good enough. Why do you not bring Gravenberg? Or another young player. Or another young player. Why do you bring Sim de Jong? Yeah, that, These are the things that, yeah. uh, that, that uh, gives Ten Hag a five for me today. All right. So we win, but I just cannot get my head around it. Why do you start with Masrui and then you substitute him at, at the beginning of the second half? You should do it the other way around if the match yeah, it has the possibility to do this. And why do you uh, do the other thing that I just told you? Why do we bring Sim de Jong? And same for Masri, and then we're we gonna end this. Yeah. He gave several passes again in, in the back that he just delivers to the to, to, to the to the opponent. What what is up with that? One one time he dribbles into the midfield, he had all the time to yeah, make a pass. He makes wrong choices. He just loses the ball. Yeah. And these things against Groningen. They do not punish it, but I can tell you, if, if you do it against Valencia, you will be punished. Of course, of course, so, better team as well. Okay, so thank you so yes. much. Uh, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, please uh, watch our um, description in the bio. We will put up some questions for you about the game. Let us know what you thought of uh, Ajax's opinion. Follow us on Instagram, of course, Facebook, and Twitter, if you have any of those uh, platforms, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much.